More than half the states in the union now have legalized medical marijuana. But did you know that you do not have to get high to consume it? And that it is helping some folks avoid the opioid vortex altogether. So many people have questions about medical pot and have no idea who to ask or still feel uncomfortable even doing it. Enter the Knox family, all doctors practicing conventional medicine until they saw a need in their community. Watch this. Meet the Knox family. A family of MDs, but how these doctors treat patients might surprise you. The cannabis is really helping. They counsel on cannabis. We call what we do in the clinics integrative cannabinoid medicine because we know that cannabis is not the thing that's helping people heal. It is a tool that helps the body really heal itself. All of these people had either failed conventional medicine or conventional medicine had failed them. Janice was asked to fill in at a medical marijuana center in Portland, Oregon. Of course, I had my preconceived notions about people who used marijuana. They just want to get high and be stoners. But when I went there, who I saw totally just rocked my conventional medicine world. I was so enthralled that I just started learning. Meanwhile, their daughters were graduating from medical school with MDs and MBAs. At first, I was sort of like, eh, mom's doing something crazy again. <laughs> um, but, but as she continued to talk to us about the patients she was seeing and the changes she was seeing in these patients from using cannabis medicine, I think both Rachel and I sort of got hooked. Oh, like look at the changes that are happening in these patients that in a primary care clinic we weren't seeing with our own patients. Their clinic helps answer questions from what form to take medical marijuana in. I'm trying new products now. To how much. Reducing the THC that you take. Yeah. They see patients of all ages and ailments from cancer. Chronic neck pain. Yes. To chronic pain. Even a 15-month-old baby with an inoperable brain tumor named Daxton Olson. We went through the YS phase for so long. The doctors told us that there was nothing in their arsenal to shrink the tumor. Daxton was put on a chemotherapy regimen, but after three months of treatments and some complications, the tumor had grown. Daxton also suffered from daily seizures. It's such a weird thing to even consider as a parent, like, am I really going to give my three-month-old son cannabis? And then as soon as we got, on, got him on cannabis, we did another three months of chemotherapy, and his tumor shrunk 26%. His seizures have gone down from 15 a day to one every two weeks. Look at you, you've grown so much. Daxton's doctors told us they credit the chemotherapy for shrinking his tumor, but say they can't rule out that the cannabis is also helping. Little one. More conventional thought is that uh, cannabis could be used as a last resort, but I really firmly believe there's a number of conditions that it should be your first resort. The doctors of our generation, we want to be bold and courageous, and the changes that cannabis does make in people's lives even more compelling for us as people who want to be healers. Wow. Janice, Rachel, Jessica, and David Knox, welcome to you all. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. A family full of doctors. We got a bunch of doctors here. All right, so let me start with you on this, Janice. You, you don't prescribe medical marijuana, so describe what you do. Well, it's still federally, federally illegal, so we're not allowed to prescribe the plant. However, we are allowed to assess patients for their medical conditions. If they have a condition that qualifies them to get a state uh, issued medical marijuana card, then we can do that. But with that, we have to examine their records, examine the patient, just the usual things we do with conventional medicine. We still have to perform those tasks. Mm -hmm. how, how unique is this, Rachel? How unique is this service that you guys are doing? Oh, extraordinarily unique. You know, before we got started, patients could go to a clinic and get a card. They would get evaluate, evaluated. It might take five to ten minutes. Um, but what we decided to do, because patients had so many questions on what to use, how to use it, when to use it, we started counseling them on their use, um, using the very pragmatic in information that we were able to glean from the current trials and studies that have been done mm -hmm. um, to help really narrow um, and, and more define how they're using that plant so that they can get meaningful outcomes. So you, you're... Mom and dad come home one day, Jessica, and they're like, we're going into the pot business? <laughs> or like, what, 
<laughs> how is that explained to you from the mom who, who used to be like, they're just stoners who want to get high? How did that woman transform into this woman? Yeah, you know, she's always been revolutionary. You know, she'll, she loves to talk about how she was a, a graduate of UC Berkeley, which is a revolutionary school. And so we were in residency and she would call us and talk to us about the work she was doing in these clinics. Um, and I, I wasn't surprised that she was doing something unusual. This is a woman who in 2007 was mining Bitcoin in the basement. No way. You know, she's, she's always been doing something that's on the cutting edge. Um, and so and she's smart. She's brilliant. And so listening to her and the conviction she had and uh, and the patients that she was taking care of, um, you know, we didn't we didn't brush it off as just something mom is doing crazy again. Yeah. Uh, there was something there um, and that, that we experienced as we started reading about it, listening to her experiences, talking to patients ourselves, there was something there. Okay, so there's so many questions. When we come back, do you have to get stoned to use medical marijuana? And is it dangerous? And we're back now with the Knox family, a family of doctors who specialize in medical marijuana and they're trying to educate the public and change people's perceptions about this drug. David, let me ask you, because you're an ER physician as well, right? That's correct. So what, you know, our moms told us, it's going to ruin your brain. Yeah. Like, don't do any sort of marijuana. So is that still true? Well, you know, you only have uh, one line on your medical record to record cannabis use, and that's drugs of abuse. So um, I'd have to say in my 40 years in the emergency room, I've seen every day opiate problems, alcohol problems, uh, maybe I can count two hands, truly cannabis problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very unusual. It's uh, such, I mean, it can help. We've seen, especially with the seizure disorders, uh, mm -hmm. it helps so many people. But, you know, there's still a stigma attached to it. But, I mean, how did you, you were brought up in the, in the same way I was, right? Which yes. is like, it's... Absolutely. Like, we, we had the groups in our school, it was like the swelts and the creamies and the dirties and the jocks. <laughs> and the dirties were the ones who did pot. That, so it yes. was associated in my mind with like, oh, those are the kids who are on drugs. They're on drugs. Correct. Correct. You know, and I grew up the same way, very religious family. If you even whispered the word drug, you were going to go to hell. But I tell you, once I read the science behind cannabis, which is not cannabis, actually. It's a, it's a, a system in our bodies called the endocannabinoid system that all of us have. And it's true science. It's true physiology. And when I understood what that physiology meant and how cannabis could affect that physiology, and it really is about that physiology, not cannabis, because there's other herbs out there that have cannabinoid-like activities. But once you understand that, then you realize we really have something valuable here that we have all been cheated out of. Mm -hmm. Right, well, because obviously it was a recreational drug and right. used in a different way long before people started to consider it medically. Um, what about that? Do you have to get stoned? I mean, I think a lot of people don't want to get stoned, but they'd like some of the medical benefits of it. People think they have to toke up a bong or something. <laughs> They don't. Have I mixed my... No. I think I've no. mixed... I don't know if you choke a bomb. Okay, sorry. You did well. You did okay. well. You did. You did. And, and no, the overwhelming majority of our patients tell us they don't want to get high right out the gate. They're just... They just want to solve their, their medical problems. How do they take it in? What are the options that they oh, use? A variety. So everybody's familiar with inhaling, toking the bond, as you might <laughs> <Thank> say. <you. laughs> Again, um, but inhaling through you know, a joint or a vaporizer, but most people don't even want to inhale. So we're talk talking about topical applications. People can rub into their joints. We're talking about tinctures that you can drop under your tongue or And it rub doesn't into make you fuzzy-headed or it doesn't give you those other Not effects? Not necessarily. Wow. You know, we have to talk to patients about their ratios or their chemical profiles, which we call chemo profiles. And we talk to them about how much THC versus how much CBD and other molecules that they'll need to avoid that. That's, what, that's the business you're in right now. So right. how do you figure out who really needs it and who is, who is just looking for a high, who's there to sort of abuse? the system yeah sometimes well so the states first of all have guidelines so most states actually uh, you know enumerate the conditions for which cannabis can be recommended so in those states we're specifically recommending it to people who have those conditions um, and in states where it's not so obvious if, if the patient has a condition that you know might be appropriate or not you really just talk to the patient and figure out what they want they'll tell you i think the first thing so many of our patients say to us is i don't want to get high this is the wave yeah, of the future though i mean this is it's been legalized in so many states we're more than half now mm -hmm. 29 plus puerto rico and guam um and obviously recreational use is getting legalized in more and more states as well so you i think you might be once again on the cutting edge mm -hmm. bitcoin 
to <laughs> mar marijuana <laughs> advising. Thank you all for yeah. telling your story. All the best. Thanks for Thank having you. We'll be right back.